Hey everyone, what is up? My name is Tim and I am founder of Usefully, useful.ly. I make a bunch of online tutorials on how to build different apps or websites or e-commerce websites. Today, I'm gonna to go over which e-commerce platform you should use. In addition to building out these courses, I do a lot of freelance work and I work with a lot of startups, smaller startups between like five and 10 people. And I always get the same exact question, which e-commerce platform is best and which one should I use? Now there's a ton, a ton, a ton of different options out there. So I'm only gonna cover two today. I might do other videos depending on the interest in this one. Uh, two I've used a lot are WooCommerce and Shopify. So I'm gonna focus on them today. This video is also focused on people that are just starting up. Uh, if you already have a company above 20 people, your solutions are gonna be a bit different than what I suggest for someone that's just starting out, just one or two people. Because when you're first starting out, the most important things are price. How much does it cost per month? Ease of use, how fast can you get up and running to start selling some products? And flexibility. Are you stuck three months down the road when you wanna add a feature and that platform doesn't have that feature? And so first I'm gonna go a little bit of background on WooCommerce and Shopify. First, WooCommerce was started as a plugin to WordPress. And WordPress is basically just a blogging platform. And so WooCommerce is just a plugin to WordPress. You have to get WordPress up and running for WooCommerce to start working. And so there's a lot of different things that have to be done to get it up and running. WooCommerce itself is free, but that's probably the only thing that is free. So you also have to consider the feature set. So if you wanna have subscriptions, that's another $200. If you wanna add membership, that's another couple hundred dollars. If you wanna add certain features, they cost a lot more money and don't get included in that original price of free. Outside of the cost to WooCommerce itself, you actually have to set up WordPress on its own hosting. So hosting can be anywhere from $5 to $30 a month. And usually you're probably gonna spend closer to the $30 range because there's hosting platforms that are specified for WordPress users. And so honestly, they do upcharge you because there's not that many options. So they have the ability to charge you more. And honestly, it's probably worth it because it's faster and more secure than that $5 version. As an example, if you pick the $5 hosting site and your website takes a couple minutes to load, you just lose all your customers anyway because they're just off to the next one. You don't wanna sit there and wait for it to load. And so this is one of the cases that you really do get what you pay for in hosting. So if you already have a WordPress site up and running, you don't have to worry about the hosting part, I would test out WooCommerce and add that plugin and see how it works. But if you were just starting from scratch, you have nothing yet, I would suggest Shopify. There's a ton of different steps that need to be taken for WooCommerce to get up and running. You need to host the WordPress blog. You need to find hosting. You need to set up the connection between the hosting and the actual code. You have to add the plugin for WooCommerce. You have to add the payment processor with the, either PayPal or Stripe or Authorize.net or any of the other sources. And that's another 2.9% per transaction or 30 plus 30 cents. So there are a lot of things that can go wrong in a WordPress or WooCommerce setup. So it's typically not the one I suggest for people to get started. Now I do love Shopify and I do suggest it to new clients that wanna get up and running quickly, but it also does have its downsides as well. It's not perfect by any means. Now the first item, pricing. It's a bit of a sticker shock if you're looking at pricing versus WooCommerce, because WooCommerce's first pricing is $0 and Shopify's price, lowest price is $30. And so if you wanna get up and running right away, you have to spend $30 a month, whether you have customers or not. So that'll start charging you right away. There's a 14 day period where you try it out for free, but as soon as that day period is over, it starts charging you $30 a month. And it's not a ton of money, but if you start doing it every month and you don't make sales, then you start to wonder why you're paying $30 a month for this. But with this $30 a month, you get a lot of the features already set up that don't come naturally with WooCommerce. Now, Shopify, unlike WooCommerce, started as an e-commerce website and added a blog to that later. WordPress started as a blog and added an e-commerce plugin later. So what Shopify does really well is the e-commerce experience. Unlike WooCommerce, where it might be a little difficult to get up and running, with Shopify, it's difficult not to get up and running. There's They make it so streamlined that it's a couple clicks away from adding a theme 
and publishing it live, but that also restricts you on the flexibility you have in the future. Now, Shopify has a huge add-on section just like WordPress's plugins, and they all work really well with Shopify, but then you start getting into pricing. So just like subscription module on WooCommerce costs two, a flat fee of $200, the subscription module on Shopify costs $30 a month plus per transaction fees. So it could be a lot more than $200. But then there's also some free add-ons. So there's, if you have digital downloads, there's a free add-on for digital downloads where it's a little harder to set it up on WooCommerce. And one of the most important things for e-commerce is the checkout process. You don't want there to be any hiccups at all from a user coming to your homepage, getting to checkout and realizing something's broken. That's what Shopify does really well. They have a full checkout process that you're actually not allowed to touch as a user, so you can't mess it up. That also reduces the flexibility you have in the future if you wanna add something to that checkout. Something that you have a little bit more flexibility with WooCommerce. So it really all depends what you're looking for, what type of product you're selling. If you're selling a digital good, if you're selling a subscription, if you're selling just a plain product with shipping, it all depends which platform you're gonna to wanna to pick. But generally, I would pick Shopify to get started up and running really quickly to test out an idea and to grow from there. Now, a platform that I used for my own website, I actually didn't use either of these. So I'm gonna do a video of a little known feature of Shopify called Shopify Lite, which is $10 a month versus $30 a month. The one thing there is you have to build your own website. And so I'm gonna go through how I did that and compare that to Snipcart. Two other options that I really love and use for myself. So it depends on how much coding knowledge you have as well. There's a ton of different options. So I'm gonna do some more comparison videos on other e-commerce platforms that I've used and the advantages and disadvantages of each. If you wanna learn how to code from scratch and build a startup at the same time, check out my course, Zero to Startup in 30 Days. You go to usefully, useful.ly to subscribe. I have all the code for each of the lessons, how to set up your first website for free, unlike Shopify or WooCommerce and how to add a checkout process to that in the end. See ya.